Hello and welcome to the Royal Institute of British Architects in London, where you find us in a state of excitement and anticipation. Yes, because the winner of Landscape Artist of the Year 2019, Fujiko Rose, has completed her prize commission to create a work of art, The City of Venice, and it's about to be unveiled for the very first time. As a keen crowd of family, invited guests and our own esteemed judges gather, it's almost time for the moment of truth. We can't wait. This year, over a thousand talented artists applied to compete for Landscape Artist of the Year. Just 48 were chosen to take part. The prize, a £10,000 commission from the prestigious Royal Institute of British Architects. Across six heats, they've pushed their artistic talents to the limit. But one artist consistently stood out from all the rest. The Landscape Artist of the Year 2019 is Fujiko Rose. Well, that's one of the best things you can really ask for, isn't it? Being an artist. It's a bit of a birthday present for me since my birthday's in three days. Now Fujiko is on her way to Venice. It's so different. I've not been anywhere like this, so it's exciting. She'll be following in the footsteps of 19th century British artist, writer and lover of Venice, John Ruskin. He says that buildings are like old people and we should take care of them. And facing some particularly Venetian artistic challenges. I'm getting myself confused about all the proportions. This is all going to be really wonky. Along the way, she'll be meeting up with some old friends. Actually, if mankind has the audacity and the imagination to create this, then we're not doing too badly. You don't know where to look, do you? There's so, so much to see. And she'll experience at first hand the environmental dangers facing the city. Water is sort of the friend and the foe of Venice. It's what makes it so special and different, but it's what's damaging it. Can, can you swim? <laughs> the artwork will be the first major commission of her career and will be unveiled in front of an invited audience at the Royal Institute of British Architects. I loved her work throughout the competition and how it evolved. Fujiko loves a challenge and so I really can't wait to see what she's done this time because I think it's going to be brilliant. I think when the red cloth comes off, I'll be staring at my shoes. <laughs> Are you ready? It's three weeks since the final of Landscape Artist of the Year, and winner Fujiko Rose is at home in Welland Garden City. Although it's business as usual in the studio today, the past few months have been something of a roller coaster. I still find winning, it's such a strange feeling. Obviously there's happiness. I'm so chuffed. I just feel, it's quite, it's quite overwhelming, yeah. Fujiko gained a place in this year's competition with a delicate textured drawing of her family home and went on to win her heat in Gateshead where she brought a timeless quality to the city's Millennium Bridge. For the first round, I was really, really nervous, actually. And then the semi-final, I was just so happy I'd, I'd made it through. In Cromarty, her evocative drawing captured the haunting beauty of the oil rigs. And then going into the finals, just the idea of winning made me feel like I really, really want this. After a long night in Battersea, her striking night view of the power station and a breathtaking commission drawing of Lantony Priory ultimately won Fujiko the title of Landscape Artist of the Year. It's just really fitting that we've got an artist who's ready to go out and do it properly. I mean, you know, I, I think her and Venice are going to get on like a house on fire. A 
A few weeks on from the excitement of her win, and Fujiko is preparing for an upcoming art fair. She's a full-time professional artist and currently divides her time between her own artwork and the design company she runs with her mother, Kari. My mum has been a big influence in terms of the arts and design side. I hope this has gone through OK. Because she's Japanese, a lot of the heritage and the kind of culture that I'm exposed to because of this has definitely been very influential and something which I like to bring into my work. Fujiko has just turned 22 and lives at home with her mum and dad, Richard. She's always scribbling, crayoning. From the time that she could pick something up and draw with it, she loved it. She works more hours than most people, and that's a testament to the love she has for the work. I was, of course, so pleased for her, and it's just amazing. What she, Fuji does is she sees something she likes, but it has to be her own style. That made her her own type of art, really. Fujiko's prize for winning Landscape Artist of the Year is a £10,000 commission from the Royal Institute of British Architects. Today, she's come to their headquarters in central London to find out the details of her brief. Whilst there may be some nerves about creating a piece for you know, such a kind of a world-renowned establishment, I think it's more overwhelmed by the kind of excitement the RIBA was established in 1834 to promote excellence in architecture, both here and abroad. They've commissioned our winner to produce a work which captures some of the most celebrated architecture in the world. Fujiko's here to meet the Institute's president, Alan Jones. Welcome to the Royal Institute of British Architects. Fabulous to be here. Well, can I tell you a little bit about the, um, the commission? Yes, please, that'd be great to hear. OK, you will be going to Venice because it is the bicentenary of the birth of John Ruskin. John Ruskin was the leading sort of critic and theorist of the Victorian era, and he was a painter, and he had a particular interest in Venice. I don't know that much about him as a person, but I've seen like some of his work, which is like his drawings are beautiful. John Ruskin was one of the most important cultural figures of 19th century Britain. A critic, writer and also a talented artist, Ruskin fell in love with Venice when he first visited the city as a young boy. He returned many times during his lifetime to document its architecture in his writing and in countless sketches and paintings. Yet despite the majesty of the Venetian architecture, by the late 19th century, the city's buildings had fallen into a state of disrepair that horrified Ruskin. He wrote to his father, describing Venice like a sugar lump in a cup of tea. He was concerned about the condition and the decay of Venice, mostly through poor conservation and poor repair of buildings. And that agenda is still there but it's also about the environmentalism, and Venice is right up there in terms of what happens if we're not careful about how we treat our world. A lot to take in. Or is there anything that you quite want to see represented in the commission piece? I, I, in a way, we leave it to you in that you've got Ruskin, and in his time, it was about the deterioration of the fabric, but now we have the, a greater, bigger risk, if you like, of, of the rising sea. It's perfectly timed, and for something for you to explore. So, Fuji, can I show you where your work is going to hang? Right here. <gasps> Front and center, huh? <laughs> That's... <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> With the scale and significance of her commission now becoming clear, it's time for Fujiko to turn her thoughts to Venice and the challenge ahead. Well, I mean, I can't really ask for a more glamorous spot, can I? This has made it more exciting for me. I'm really excited to go. It's actually, it's like, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do this. With just a few days to go until she leaves for Venice, Fujiko's in her studio and has started on her packing. There's boxes with labels, but the labels don't mean anything because you go in and it's like, oh, this is a box with pigments in. 
No, it's sellotape. During her trip, she'll be working on several preparatory drawings. I'm basically putting this whole pack in here, fit wherever I can in. Charcoal. Fujiko works mainly in Indian ink, using a dipping pen and brushes on handmade paper. I don't plan on working on white with the coloured papers or textured papers as they kind of give a slight, sort of like, like a romantic feel to it. There is a bit of that kind of romantic sense to Venice. Also, you know, if I'm looking back at having an eye on the past as well, it's quite nice. I'll try and fit the paper into this. So if it's this, this, and essentially a pencil case, then I'm pretty much set to go, yeah. For centuries, artists and writers like John Ruskin caught their first glimpse of Venice from the water. And today, it's Fujiko's turn. I like this way of traveling. It uh, feels quite glamorous. Airport, straight onto the taxi boat, which is very cool. It's so different. I've not been anywhere like this, so it's exciting. Winner of Landscape Artist of the Year, Fujiko Rose, is in Venice to research her prize commission for the Royal Institute of British Architects. She's following in the footsteps of 19th century British art critic John Ruskin, whose books established Venice as one of the architectural wonders of the world. Fujiko is staying at Hotel La Calcina, on the spot where Ruskin lodged in 1877 during one of his many visits to Venice. To start her off on her journey, she's joined by Artist of the Year judge and expert on Venice, Kate Bryan. Fujiko, welcome to Venice. Ah, wow, it's amazing to be here. <laughs> so beautiful. So you have the best commission. Reba have asked you to paint a scene of Venice. We're commemorating the bicentenary of John Ruskin. Ruskin spent a long time here meticulously recording every building, every corner, every stone was interesting to him. So today, our entire vision of Venice, our understanding, our passion, a lot of it comes from Ruskin. John Ruskin first visited the city in October 1835, aged 16. Twenty years later, he published one of the definitive books on Venice. The Stones of Venice was a love letter to the city, which celebrated the beauty of its art and architecture, but also contained an impassioned warning for the future of its fragile buildings. So I've got a little present for you. This is a traveler's edition of the Stones of Venice. It's a really beautiful little book. And I wanted you to see this because this is really Ruskin's rationale behind writing this. He was really worried about the fact that the city was sort of dissolving before his eyes. And so he says here what he's so worried about. I would endeavor to trace the lines of this image before it be forever lost and to record as far as I may the warning which seems to me to be uttered by every one of the fast gaining waves that beat like passing bells against the stones of Venice. I'm so excited to get you out there onto the water to see these buildings that Ruskin really, really brings to life in this book, but there's nothing like seeing them in the flesh. Fujiko's here in what John Ruskin called the paradise of cities. He saw its architecture as the closest that human ingenuity would ever get to God's own act of creation. Venice, every time you come, you're as thrilled and as excited and surprised and gobsmacked as the first time you came. That actually never goes away. The architecture Ruskin described so vividly in The Stones of Venice 
was built between the 9th and 15th centuries, when Venice was one of the richest cities in the world, an independent republic with an empire stretching across the Mediterranean. They were hardcore bankers, they were mercantile. If you think about it, this was a melting pot for the entire world. So really it's an intersection between the East and the West. It's just so different to like um, anything, isn't it? So look, this is one of my absolute favorite buildings anywhere in the world, Cardoro. This building got Ruskin so excited. The Venetian Gothic architectural style is characterized by elegant waterfront colonnades, delicate stonework, and distinctive pointed arches. You see the height of these windows, just how exaggerated they are. And it's this idea that you're kind of like shooting up, it's like the glory of God. But can you see just the level of detail and ornamentation? There's some really lovely um, windows and glasswork. My favourite quote about Venice is by Anthony Burgess, and he says, if you despair of man, go to Venice. Because if he can build a city like this, his soul deserves to be saved. And you think, yeah, actually, if mankind has the audacity and the imagination to create this, then we're not doing too badly. We've just now got to save it. Hey, look, it's the Rialto Bridge. Wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is amazing. And so now, look, Fuji, this is just the, one of the most exciting views in the world. This is the Doge's Palace, the Campanile, and San Marco Square just through there. St. Mark's Square and its famous basilica were, for John Ruskin, the most beautiful buildings in the world. But he was increasingly dismayed at how little was being done to protect them from the ravages of time. Oh, got your sea legs. <laughs> Nearly two centuries later, this fragile city is more vulnerable than ever. So this is where you can see the flooding problems. Rising sea levels due to climate change and the pressure of 30 million tourists each year are damaging the fabric of the city. Now Ruskin's fears seem more like a prophecy. Wow, it's packed, isn't it? No, we're slightly constricted by the water. St. Mark, the patron saint of Venice, this is his church. It's like nothing else on earth. It's completely covered with the spoils of their amazing republic. It is the most sort of magnificent building. It's showing off and saying, we're doing really good. I mean, you don't know where to look, do you? There's so, so much to see. So you can see all the different tracery, the stonework, the marbles, the columns, the amazing arches the horsemen, I mean, it's just endlessly interesting. There's so much to look at. Fujiko will have the next four days to explore Venice. She'll be looking for a view that suits her style and captures the spirit of this extraordinary city. Fuji, we need to spend a lifetime together in Venice to really see every little detail that Ruskin wanted us to see, but I think already you're getting a bit of a sense of this very special, very complex city. I have to wish you good luck. You're following in the footsteps of loads of artists. You've got to avoid all the cliches, and you've got to do something which is very distinctly Fujiko. <laughs> and I cannot wait to see it. It's going to be a challenge, but it's a welcome challenge for sure. Yeah. A very welcome challenge. During his time in Venice, John Ruskin spent many hours sketching the buildings he wrote about in The Stones of Venice. To try her own hand at capturing the details of Venetian Gothic, Fujiko's return to the palace of Cardoro on the Grand Canal. I've got a picture on my iPad of John Ruskin's sketch. It's more colorful than I expected, actually. Watercolor, sort of kind of half-finished one. I love John Ruskin's drawings. Cardoro, or House of Gold, is the best surviving example of Venetian Gothic architecture. Completed in 1430, it was once home to one of the great aristocratic Venetian families. I'm getting myself confused about all the proportions. This is all going to be really wonky. At first, I did a very simple pencil sketch just to get a rough sense of what I'm planning on including. 
And then I've just moved on to this brown ink. And it's a mix of using the brush and the dipping pen and using some water washes. I'm just going bit by bit. As much as I like the structure, they are something I usually would avoid sketching just because there's so many things and I sort of struggle to get it all in there. Suddenly I'm missing half of the columns. I think I chose too much of it, like I, I should have just taken a smaller part of it to sketch. Go with it now. It's gonna be some moody building, slightly evening view. With her first preparatory sketch complete, Fujiko returns to Hotel La Calcina to reflect on her first day in Venice. It's interesting to be here and, yeah, the location that Ruskin stayed himself and to try and go to these places which he himself visited and the fears of his time are still very much prevalent today. So rebranded my discussion with Kate and how Venice is incredibly vulnerable to things like the rising waters. It's interesting looking at the problems, knowing I'm sort of part of the problem coming here on plane. <laughs> and it's, uh, you are aware of it. It's, it's, it's sort of like an ironic, it's gonna be a slightly ironic drawing. Landscape Artist of the Year, Fujiko Rose, is in Venice, researching her winning commission for the Royal Institute of British Architects. Today, she wants to explore a different side to Venice, away from the Grand Canal and the crowds of St. Mark's. She's come to meet Nelson Kishi, a Japanese artist who's lived in Venice and been inspired by the city for 30 years. Venice is like a labyrinth, you know? Here in my area, every day or every moment is different. Kishi's studio is in the residential district of Canareggio. He's offered to take Fujiko out sketching in the day-to-day -day world of ordinary Venetians. I might sit on the driver. <sighs> Look, the woman came you know, to hang the clothes. <sighs> I like these things. Just as part of the uh, life. Yeah. You're capturing more all the daily life, and you've got the people. I always like just ignore all the people. So I think it's it's nice. There's like different different approaches. I, I like. Can you swim? <laughs> As Kishi returns home to dry off, Fujiko chooses to stay in quiet Canareggio, where she's found a view that's caught her imagination. One of the interesting things with meeting Kishi today was walking through some less postcard areas, in a sense. They're not what you would normally see in the photos. The view that I found is sort of peeking through this rather open rail and it has all the different sort of components which I think you can find in Venice, of like the boat and the water and the posts. And there's a sort of weathered wall and the Gothic arches. It has that, that sort of romantic vibe, but I think you can see the effects that you have being next to the water and how much that kind of damages the structures. Today's a bit calmer because, in a way, I'm not trying to recreate something like a Ruskin drawing or thinking about the different kind of masterful pieces of Venice. 
So with the ink drawing, whatever's in the foreground I'll do first. Then the second layer is the uh, foliage. And then the third layer is going to be the building behind with the Gothic arches. Because if I draw the arches first, if I want to do like a wash or anything, it just becomes like a whole big mess. You've got to work the opposite way around to paint. Nice little spot, isn't it? Back in the centre of the city, the environmental issues facing Venice are unmistakable. But there are campaigns to limit the number of tourists, and flood barriers are being constructed to protect the city from the rising tides. John Ruskin was one of the very first to argue that the great buildings of the world, like those in Venice, must be preserved for future generations, an idea that was to become the foundation of today's attitudes to conservation. Fujiko's come back to St Mark's Square to meet up with historian and Ruskin expert Emma Stenio. One of the things that was mentioned to me as well was Ruskin's concern about the damage that was being done to Venice, how to deal with that. You find in Ruskin a perspective which has to do with buildings but can be easily translated into a lesson about life. He says that buildings are like old people and we should take care of them. The, the sense of this was that we have to, to preserve them, to be healthy, to be well, to be happy, and so on. In metaphorical terms. As long as possible. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and taking care was not to damage, of course, but also to know, to know the story of it. Because when you start knowing the story, it's, a, it's an act of love. Love is a, is a very strong uh, word for Ruskin. The, the sense of loving, of uh, taking care, of sympathizing and all, all this. As I'm learning more, when you know those kind of extra details, when you look at them, you do appreciate them more and you mm -hmm. see more of it and you enjoy it more. I think you care more as well when you know. Uh, this is what Ruskin meant. It was this great love for the city of Venice that made it so hard for Ruskin to witness the neglect he saw before his eyes. But he wasn't the first artist or the last to fall for the Venetian dream. The 17th century Venetian painter Canaletto was one of many to construct so-called impossible views, playing around with the layout of the buildings. Some famous artworks even appear to have been painted from right out on the water. Ruskin also tried sketching in a gondola and he struggled with it. So I'm not expecting to be creating any masterpieces here. This is going to be the dodgiest drawing I've ever done. <laughs> Is it hard? Is it very hard? <laughs> you have a lot of movement, you know, left, right, something like this. <laughs> but for today's artists, there's a slightly easier way of capturing the view. I think one of the benefits of photography is that later on, when you go back and you work on the pieces, you uh, always find bits that you've missed in person. They're two separate sketches, but I've sort of made them into one with the addition of some random bridge. <laughs> Just a little quick sketch. Thank you. As Fujiko has discovered, the rise and fall of the water is the heartbeat of Venice. The city sits in a shallow lagoon on the North Adriatic Sea, and when the first peoples arrived here in the 5th century AD, 
they settled not on Venice, but on the nearby smaller island of Torcello. Today, Fujiko's taking a trip across the lagoon. So it was an early start today, just saw the sunrise over the lagoon, which was amazing. It's very nice to see some nature around as well. It feels quite different, and that's nice. This is the next Ruskin stop, as he also visited Torcello and wrote about it in the Stones of Venice. Don Ruskin called Torcello the mother of Venice. Its first inhabitants were refugees fleeing the barbarian forces of Attila the Hun. Fujikos come to their cathedral, Santa Maria Assunta. In the Stones of Venice, Ruskin praises the beautiful simplicity of its architecture, in contrast to the buildings of its more flamboyant neighbor. It has evidently been built by men in flight and distress who sought in the hurried erection of their island church such a shelter for their earnest and sorrowful worship, as, on the one hand, could not attract the eyes of their enemies by its splendor, and yet, on the other, might not awaken too bitter feelings by its contrast with the churches which they had seen destroyed. Torcello's ancient cathedral stands on a stretch of low marshland overlooking the lagoon. Taking advantage of the tranquility, Fujiko's found a quiet spot down by the water. Coming to Torcello, you do really feel the difference. It's a very calming, quite serene place. There's a lot more like open space. So the view that I'm drawing is very simple little, little jetty, but there's a couple little posts and there's a little red gate. What I find really appealing with drawing like an intimate view, and it's this feeling of taking away the kind of distance between yourself and the painting and the scenery inside it, and that feeling of being able to go through and almost touch it, you can walk through or walk into it. I'm just taking my camera out. I'm just gonna grab a quick photo as it's starting to rain. With water a continuing theme, Fujiko returns to her room at La Calcina to finish her drawing. Ruskin loved Torcello because it was the start of Venice. It was where the first people came to before building Venice. And that history behind it is also what I found to be quite interesting. So I'm not trying to literally put in, you know, people running away from barbarians, you know, that's not what I'm trying to put into the work. It's also about the future of Venice. And I really want it to be kind of a, a balance of the kind of the past, the present and the future, sort of try and inject all those things in, in such a way that they come together. Landscape Artist of the Year, Fujiko Rose, has spent five days exploring Venice. From small canals and shaded alleyways to magnificent palazzos. She's spending her last day sketching the famous Grand Canal, the artery of the city, and a view that John Ruskin drew many times. I've decided to draw the Grand Canal in this direction. I thought I should challenge myself a little bit and do something which involves more dimensions than I'm comfortable with normally. <laughs> the composition I've chosen is about 60% foreground. And the reason for that is, in a way, if I was only drawing the Grand Canal, I feel like I'd have to pay more attention to the details on like all the windows, and, th and then there's too much. Whereas if I focus on what's near me, the background can be more like in a soft focus. That's just my way of dealing with such a vast amount of things. 
Like so many artists before her, Fujiko will leave Venice inspired by the complex perspectives and changing light of this floating city. Venice has been something that has really challenged me. It's made me try and think about composition differently in places. It's different exploring a city with the thought of creating a piece of artwork. It made me stop and look at those little uh, bits and details, and I think that's really uh, stuck with me. Venice will definitely be a special trip for me, just completely unlike anything else. I will miss it, but I would love to visit again there at some point. Back home in Welland Garden City, Fujiko is working hard on her commission. She's using the preparatory sketches from her trip to Venice, plus some inspiration from John Ruskin himself, to create her final composition. I chose this building which is sitting on the water and it has the Gothic arches and it has these beautiful details and it also has that sort of wear and tear that you get from being so exposed to the water. All of the drawings I did, it's quite funny when I look at it, actually, there's little elements of each one. So in a way, actually, in some ways, the balance is more similar to the, the one that I did on the first day. But I think I've tried to take the feel of the kind of more out-of-the-way places. I'm just starting to draw what's actually the most detailed part of the picture at the moment, which is just around the door. I think the actual process of drawing, I've never found relaxing. I'm sure a lot of athletes, the actual process isn't exactly calming as such, but there's such satisfaction from it. And I like coming up with the ideas in the first place and, you know, climb up the mountain when you're drawing it, and then you're at the top right at the end. As the artwork develops, Fujiko's made some decisions about the kind of story she wants it to tell. She's keen to evoke the history of Venice, but also to reflect the contemporary city and fears for its future. I'd say between like a third to a half of the picture that I am drawing will be water. The water is sort of le almost leaking out. It's not contained. Water is sort of the friend and the foe of Venice. It's what attracts people. It's also what makes it so special and different. But it's what's damaging it, what it's sinking into. One of the things I have, which is quite bold in the picture as a feature, is this sort of diagonal line, like a beam of light coming across the picture. Everything that's in the light is uh, quite well defined. And the parts which are sort of swallowed up by the darkness, if you will, <laughs> I've sort of obscured a lot of it. The really scary part is just how it all sits together. I think commissions can be scarier, and you really want to please the people you're giving it to. And um, that's quite intimidating, actually. Today, Fujiko's winning commission will be unveiled at the Royal Institute of British Architects in London. It's six weeks since she won Landscape Artist of the Year and six months since she first submitted her drawing to the competition. And the work is finished. Today's definitely a milestone. This is my first sort of proper commission. Definitely a big event. I think when the red cloth comes off, I'll be staring at my shoes. <laughs> As an audience of friends, family and RIBA members gathers in the Institute Gallery, there are three guests in particular who've been looking forward to this moment. I'm really excited. I think Fujiko is one of our best winners. Her work is, you know, it's incredible and it's new and I haven't seen anything 
like that. And also we have a perfect marriage yes. between Venice and Fujiko. It's really exciting. But I'm expecting to see something quite masterly and large yes. <laughs> and, and detailed and intense. Anything else? And, <laughs> and wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome everyone to this very special occasion. We're here to celebrate the winner of the Landscape Artist of the Year 2019, who's going to unveil her work. Here she is, Vujiko Rose. But before we see the finished artwork, we're going to hear from the man who commissioned it. It's Alan Jones, who is the president of the RIBA. Welcome everybody to the RIBA for this very special event. The RIBA has over four million pieces in its collection that are shown here publicly in this building and also around the world. So Fuji's piece of work will be in very good company. So I'm very, very interested to see what Fuji has created for us. Are you ready? It's a great um, moment for <laughs> you and for us all. Here we go. Oh. I think Ruskin would be pleased. Very, very much so. Uh, very impressive, and I'd like to look at it in much more detail. This is a really wonderful work of art, and you're to be congratulated. Well done, well done. <laughs> I know you're a good artist, but I've never seen, you know, I didn't think you could do monumental. This is really monumental. As I look at it, the drawings are drawing me in closer. There's more and more stuff to look at. There's just so much there, and it's magical. I really feel like you and I saw this together on the Grand Canal as well, so I feel really special that I was there. We wanted something big. We wanted something which thought about the past, but also talks about the present. We wanted a little dash of gold. She's completely spoilt us. We're ruined now. I like the urbanness of it too. Even though it is this sort of ancient city, there's a grittiness to yeah. the elegance. Here we've shown that ink can still do the business well. Fujiko has done us really, really proud, and it's a wonderful piece of work. Very, very impressed. I think it really captures Venice and the beauty of it, but also the vulnerability. I think it will sit very well in our public building. It's a great piece. What exactly I won didn't really like sink in. And like being here, I just feel the scale of it. And it's uh, amazing. Getting such a positive response is definitely something that's going to stay with me. It makes me want to push myself more and try more and do more. And so that'll be, I'm looking forward to that. To find out how you could take part in our competition, visit our website, skyartsartistoftheyear.tv.